What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott and it's been a long time since I've played vanilla Skyrim, the OG experience, and since we have the new release of Skyrim Anniversary Edition, I got a little nostalgic and hopped back in to try out all the new stuff, and I couldn't help but want to make a new build for the vanilla players, especially with all the new content from the Ghosts of the Tribunal. If you're a big fan of Morrowind and the Dunma, then you're going to love this build. This is the Hand of Almalexia. They were said to be the greatest of all warriors in Tamriel, imbued with enchantments and divine magics gifted from the goddess herself. With the blessings of a goddess and the legendary twin blades of power, this build will carve his way through all enemies of Almzavi. But before we dive into the Hand of Almalexia, I want to let you know that we've been fortunate enough to have a sponsor for this video, Raid Shadow Legends, the popular mobile RPG all about building the ultimate team of champions. You can use the links below to download Raid not only on mobile, but also on PC. In Raid, you'll level up your champions there to unlock new ones as you slaughter your way through the many modes on offer like the story campaign, the arena, and clan boss mode. For clans, you'll want your friends' usernames and you can find me as Fudge Killer. but some challenges are only for the strongest of them all, and in Raid, that challenge is the Doom Tower. Long ago, the Arbiter was forced to trap dangerous creatures of Eldritch Might in a tower made from obsidian and magic, but its wards have since weakened. You and your champions have been tasked with keeping the tide of evil at bay by fighting your way through the tower, taking out every enemy you can. Each each month there's a new rotation of the Doom Tower with more bosses to defeat and unique rewards to earn. In addition to fun challenges, sometimes it's nice to just pour through the champion index to see all the cool character designs to unlock. I also like the strategic aspect of seeing how to best mix champions to beat a certain campaign level. Raid is also adding to the game all the time. This month there is a bunch of new champions, special events every day, and the brand new huge feature Guardian Ring that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. And at the start of December, Raid's releasing one of its biggest, most anticipated features ever. Hit the link in the description or scan our QR code to get a huge head start in Raid. You'll get an epic hero, Chonaru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. You can find all the treasure up here. Now it's time for the backstory. My name is Dremen Serethi. I was born year 400 of the Third Era, in the city of Cogatel that looms over the grey meadows, an ashen swamp where only mushrooms grow. It is a place of silence, a place of mourning, or at least it was for me. My mother died bringing me into this world. There were complications at birth that the priests could not remedy, and for my whole life my father grieved. He threw himself into his duty, his responsibilities. He was a brother of House Redoran. Our family had long been proud members of this great house, and naturally I was raised to be the same. He was the embodiment of Redoran's virtues, duty, gravity, and piety and I was molded in his image. He loved me, I think, but he was always harsh and ever serious. Amongst even the stern Redoran, children were allowed play and laughter, but not I. When I was not being trained in the arts of warfare, long before was age appropriate, I was in the temple praying to Almsavi and learning from their divine scriptures. My father showed care in his own way, but I could not help but be envious of the tenderness and compassion that a mother gave. It was in Almsavi, well, it was in Almalexia that I found this desire for compassion. She was the healing mother of Morrowind, the Lady of Mercy, a source of compassion, sympathy, and forgiveness, all holy virtues worthy of reverence. She possessed the wisdom of the millennia, an otherworldly kind, and in her I found the resolve to endure my father. I was stronger than all my age, wiser and more devout than most. My father was proud of what I was becoming, something that I could see in his eyes during fleeting moments when his stone face broke, and I think his pride shone most when I joined the temple and became an ordinator, a priest soldier of the temple, hunting heretics and enemies of the faithful. In a few years I would be sent to Mournhold, the city of Almalexia herself. I was honored and became a high ordinator after a short time the youngest of my kind, at only 23 years. It was then that I had an audience with the goddess herself. She was taller than I imagined, with skin of the chyma and eyes flecked gold, her red hair crowned and tied into an intricate bun. Her hand graced my cheek when she gave her blessing, a tender mark that I can still feel today. That day I took in her every detail and committed them to the library of my mind. She had my heart, my body, my soul, all were devoted to her service. Four years had passed, and in that time, the city had changed. 
on the Isle of Vardenfell, the Nerevarin had slain Dagoth Ur and become a champion of the people. Tensions rose and rumours spread. The hand Salas Valor was slain for turning against the goddess and spreading slanderous untruths about her, and I, Dremen Serethi, was the elected candidate for his replacement. I would be closer to her soon. I would be her hand. My life's ambition was within grasp, but my hand turned to mist and I could not touch her. The Nerevarine slew Almalexia. That is what the people had said. They said that the goddess had gone mad and slain Sothasil. They said that their powers were waning and only an ailing Vivek remained. Could not believe them. Their lies. But Almalexia did not return to her temple. I never became her hand, but I stayed faithful. The archcanons told of the tribunal's prophesied return to glory and affirmed that this was only a test, yet the dissidents and Ashlanders spread their venomous words and poisoned the well. I obeyed the Alma ruler, the commander of the ordinators, and he sent us against the dragging tides of heresy. For six years, Mournhold was truly a place of mourning. I killed many. My faith was tested. Then opened the gates of oblivion, and Dagon's hordes unleashed upon the land. The coward Red Legions abandoned us and returned to Cyrodiil, and we alone were left to deal with the onslaught of the Daedra. Gates swallowed cities and spewed bile of Dramora, Scamps, and Clanfears until one day, after many months, after many scars, it stopped. The stories say that Martin Septim saved Tamriel, and a new era had begun. Some Dunmer then turned to the Imperial Divines, others peeled off and became members of the new emerging Reclamation's faith. Even from within our own ranks, faith was shaken. Vivek had disappeared, some say Daedra took him, some say the Nerevarine killed him. All the same, the last of the Tribunal had gone. The streets were filled with those that decried them as false gods, and in the years following, sects of the Tribunal Temple had reformed and transitioned to the Reclamation's faith, claiming that alms of you were mere saints, not gods. In this time, I felt Almalexia's tender hand on my cheek. I kept the faith. Five years later, the Ingenium failed and Bardau crashed into Vivek City, causing the eruption of Red Mountain. The skies of Morrowind were sick with ash and a haze of red painted the clouds. Many panicked at first, fearing an invasion from oblivion. But in a way, the realization of what had really happened was worse. I was still at my post as a high ordinator in Mournhold, part of a fractured temple. Heretics and dissidents were now counted amongst my brothers and sisters. I lived in the darkest time of our history, only to be made darker still with the invasion from the south. The lizards came in droves, preying on a debilitated Morrowind. They slaughtered their way through the Dashan Plains and came upon Mournhold in a scaled wave of gnashing spite. All able-bodied Dunmer fought their hardest to defend the holy city, but it was eventually sacked and those who remained, including I, were forced to retreat. The Redoran army marched south from Blacklight and were grouping in Cogatel, my home. I would return for the first time since I left, having only sent back a few letters in all those years. I learned from the people of my past that my father had turned to drinking after the fall of the tribunal, and soon they had found him in a puddle of sujama and blood, his throat slit by his own hand. I felt sadness then, but it paled in comparison to the loss of the tribunal. It was hard to say I ever loved my father, but I was grateful for him, more of a mentor than a parent. If I even could grieve, there was no time. I joined up with the Redoran army and for years we toiled against the Argonian invasion until the year 10 of the Fourth Era, when we finally prevailed and the invasion was halted. Expanses of southern Morrowind were still under Argonian control, yet they had stopped their conquest. Naturally, it was time for Morrowind to rebuild, but the Morrowind they were building was not one I wanted to be a part of. The temple had completed its transformation into a temple of reclamations. Most of the Dunmeri people had turned to the Anticipations, the primitive, crueler forms that came before, Azura, Mafala, and Boethia. I was ashamed then of the Dunma. For the first time in thousands of years that their faith in Olmsevi had truly been tested, and they failed, they turned away, their faith far weaker than their fear. 
Despite the rebuilding, refugees poured out of Morrowind into neighbouring Skyrim and Cyrodiil, and I followed them and I kept the faith. By the year 20 of the Fourth Era, I had settled in the growing slums of Chadenhall, filled with many Dunmer who had fled from the Dashan. I blended in, became a mercenary, I just carried on and kept the faith. The words of the reclamations followed me here in time, but I kept the true faith. There were times when I rekindled cults of Almalexia, but many were torn apart or lost in time. It was then I decided upon a pilgrimage of sorts. Alms of you were not in Morrowind, and so I would devote my life to searching for them. I kept the faith. I did not abandon her. For over a century I wandered, a merc, a vagrant, a soldier, a priest, a bodyguard, a henchman. I was all of these things at times. At the break of the Great War, I was recruited in Leowen as a mercenary by the Aldmeri Dominion. I took the offer up. A chance to slay Imperials? Why not? And then, that ended. In peace. I would have been happier to see the Great Dragon die, but alas, I spent decades more picking fights, wandering Cyrodiil. Damn Imperials. I had kept the faith, but I would be lying if I said I was not losing it. I was patient, but I am old now. I turn to the drink at times to numb the pain. I don't know if I'll ever see her again. I love her still, but I am losing the faith. I am 234 years old, in the year 201 of the Fourth Era. Work has dried up here in Cyrodiil, but I hear of a civil war in Skyrim. Perhaps another opportunity to kill some Imperials, make some more money. I hear they have good mead too. I will try to keep the faith. Okay, that was the backstory for The Hand, who I named Dremen Serethi. Too Long didn't read, he was born in the late Third Era, had a hard upbringing with no mother, found a mother figure in Almalexia, became an Ordinator, then High Ordinator at a young age of 23, and nearly became a Hand of Almalexia before a whole slew of tragedies, the fall of the Tribunal, Oblivion Crisis, Eruption of Red Mountain, and the Argonian Invasion, which led him on a wandering path trying to keep the faith that Almalexia and the Tribunal would one day return. And that path led him to Skyrim, where he gets caught in the crossfire and ends up as a prisoner to the Imperials. Wrong place, wrong time. Though I suppose if they knew how many Imperials he had killed, they would have executed him all the same. Starting Skyrim as the Hand, he is going to be at his lowest point. His faith in the Tribunal is dwindling and he is coming off decades of bar brawls and excessive drinking. When Alduin attacks, he is going to be awestruck. In that moment, he is compelled to stay alive and will follow Raloff out of Helgen safely. No way is he going with that damn Imperial. He figures he may as well go to the Jarl and perhaps get some kind of reward, seeing as he now has nothing. But as he follows his path and eventually discovers his dragon blood, the hand will be revitalized and his faith rejuvenated. Others will claim his dragonborn gifts are granted by Akatosh but he will know otherwise. He will embrace the Dragonborn role through a different lens. In the book, Varieties of Faith in the Empire, it says this about Almalexia. However, most aspects of Akatosh, which seem so important to the mortal races, namely immortality, historicity, and genealogy, have conveniently resurfaced in Almalexia, the most popular of Morrowind's divine tribunal. The Hand views his dragonborn blood as a divine gift from Almalexia. He believes himself to be the herald of her return. It is his job to preserve the mortal realm, defeat Alduin, and pave the way for Omzavi's return. This is what the Hand of Almalexia believes. His faith is restored to the fullest. Remember, the Hand is at his core a zealot devoted to Almalexia and the Tribunal. But with being a zealot comes some distasteful biases. The Hand is not fond of Argonians or Imperials, considering his experiences with both, and you should roleplay as such, but additionally, he is not fond of many races other than Dunmar. Even amongst the Dunmar, he finds those who have resorted to their archaic past for answers as weak, and he scorns the Reclamation's faith. There are few he would count amongst his friends, though he is not a fundamentalist only. While he disagrees with other faiths and races, he can respect the virtues of those who are dutiful and honor-bound, regardless of their position. He is not a disrespectful person. Also important for role-playing the Hand of Almalexia is how the faith affects his decisions regarding the Daedra. In short, he is not all too fond of them, and so Daedric quests should not be a priority, especially those that require devious tasks. 
Of the reclamations, the deity he could respect most is Azura, like most Dunma do. Nerevar, after all, was her champion. So doing her quest and acquiring Azura's star works, but Mafala and Boethia's respective quests don't fit the bill in my opinion. For Daedra such as Clavicus Vile or Hermaeus Mora, I feel as if you can be more flexible, as their quests aren't too devious, however, there are four Daedra that are absolutely off limits for the hand. They are what the Dunmeri Faith consider the four corners of the House of Troubles. That is, Mehrunes Dagon, Molagbal, Malakath, and Sheogorath. These four princes are regarded as testing gods, trials for the Dunmar to overcome. Sheogorath tries to ruin the mind, Malakath tries to ruin the body, and Molag Bell tries to ruin the Dunmeri purity, whereas Dagon embodies the fierce terrain that the Dunmar face. Do not praise these troublesome Daedra. Stay true to Omzavi. Now the main piece of content that is truly going to bring this build to life is the Ghosts of the Tribunal. The Hand will find lots to do in Solstheim, helping Raven Rock and thwarting House Lalu's plans makes sense, but the Anniversary Edition added a new questline regarding a cult to Omsvi that has stayed loyal and awaits the Tribunal's return. They are hiding out in a temple called Ashfall's Tear, and throughout the course of this quest you will be able to join the cult by besting the temple's greatest warriors to claim the goddesses of approval. I will link a video in the description below which contains a full walkthrough of all the quests involved, but ultimately through this you will be able to join like-minded individuals who share the faith in Omsavi and you will be able to acquire a full set of her hand armor, which is the same armor worn by the hands of Almalexia, and beyond that you will be able to wield the Twin Blades Hope's Fire which belonged to Almalexia and True Flame which belonged to Nerevar. With this gear, with your new brothers and sisters and the power of the voice, you will become the ultimate herald of Olmsavi. The Hand, despite being old, has finally fulfilled his ambition to become a Hand of Almalexia and found himself an even greater responsibility. He kept the faith and it is stronger than ever. Personally, I like to set up my home in Severin Manor on Ravenrock and use Ashfall's Tear as a secondary base. Additionally, if you want a companion, any of the four best warriors of the temple, the Two Hands, the Watchman, and Vespath the Toe, can be used. And this is just perfect for roleplaying. As for the other factions, for the Dawnguard DLC, most definitely join the Dawnguard and slay the foul Volkaha beasts of Molag Bal. Also, some of the restoration spells you can acquire here are great for this character. But Ultimately, he and the Dawnguard share a goal in thwarting Harkin. The College of Winterhold is an option, if only for access to more spells like Grand Healing, and Restoration is our only magic, and I guess Enchanting too, but joining the College is more so for access rather than any specific role-playing angle. The Companions are not a particularly good fit, considering it involves becoming a werewolf, and if you do choose to go through with this, then definitely seek a cure. But I suppose some of the virtues professed by the Companions would align, but Ultimately, the Hand's days as a mercenary are over, now that he has a restored purpose as a herald of Almalexia. In regards to the Civil War, Imperials are an absolute no-go. The Tribunal Temple never liked the Imperials, but their abandonment of Morrowind during the Oblivion Crisis sealed that hatred. You can join the Stormcloaks, if only to hurt the Empire, using your thumb to gain validity amongst the Nords, but really, the Civil War for this character is only if you are really looking to get extra content. But it can still work, considering that he has worked with the Old Mary Dominion in the Great War, but once again, only to hurt the Imperials and for the money he needed, of course. But I think that just about wraps up the role-playing section. Hopefully, through the backstory and the tips I gave you here, you should have a good idea of how to role-play the Hand of Almalexia, and now you should be pretty familiar with the character concept. So let's get into the technical aspects. It is abundantly clear that this character is a Dunma. Nothing too significant here, it's all about the role-playing aspect, but 50% fire resistance is a nice help against dragons. Now, in regards to the Standing Stone, if you're a long-time Fudge Muppet fan, then you'll know the answer is the Atronarch Stone. I know it's a meme at this point, but in vanilla Skyrim, it really is the best in my opinion. You can use the Lover Stone earlier on, which boosts all skill improvement rates by 15%, but ultimately, the Atronarch's 50% spell absorption is just too good to pass up. You also get 50 more points of Magicka and 50% slower Magicka regen, which isn't too important to us because we aren't using Magicka for anything other than healing, 
but the 50 more magicka early on will help us get a leg up before we can get access to powerful enchantments to boost magicka and decrease casting costs. Overall, having 50% of all spells that hit you nullified is too good to pass up. But let's talk about the stats, because we have an interesting play here. Initially, you want to go one to one with health and stamina. But once stamina is at 200, a little boost to help with power attacks, we go all in on health. Health is what keeps you breathing, and with such powerful late game restoration, this build can restore their large pool of health with ease, making them a powerful tank with a never ending whirlwind of blades. We also have zero Magicka investment, and that is because with the Atronarch Stone and Magicka and Restoration Enchantments, we are going to be able to rack up more than enough Magicka to apply healing spells when needed, and we do have an interesting role-playing angle here. Almalexia is known as the Healing Mother, and she gave her hands powerful enchantments with her divine powers. Now, our character is not naturally skilled in magic, but the way we sort of role-play this is that all his restoration and enchanting skill comes through his faith in Almalexia. Instead of imagining that it is his magical prowess and academic study, I like to imagine that his enchanted armor and his fortified attributes and strength all come from his faith in Almalexia, and when he uses restoration magic such as Stendhal's aura or grand healing, I like to imagine that it's a miracle or divine intervention from Almalexia as opposed to a spell that he just cast. I don't know, it improves the role playing for me, so make of that what you will. But time to get into the skills and the perks. So the Hand of Almalexia at his core is actually a warrior build, an enchanted warrior with a hint of a paladin vibe. All of his magical prowess in enchanting and restoration, like I just mentioned, I envision as divine gifts from Almalexia, and this is reflected in the fact that he relies on his enchanted gear to be able to wield restoration magic well, and have as much health, stamina, and magicka as he does. So, the skills for the Hand of Almalexia are one-handed for dual wielding his blades, heavy armor for apparent reasons, smithing to improve the aforementioned armor and weapons, enchanting to bless your armor with the divine grace of Almalexia, and restoration so that Almalexia's healing miracles can work through you. Finally, I also added speech. For practical reasons, with lots of enchanting and smithing, money can be eaten up easily, so speech will help you make money back. But also from a role-playing angle, you want to be a charismatic orator to bring back the Dunma people to the true faith. I'll show the perks you want on screen. They're all fairly straightforward, but as a note, an early investment in haggling with one or two points can actually help accelerate speech XP gained. And as for novice and apprentice restoration, you will need those ASAP for function, but for the most part, prioritize heavy armor and one-handed because this is your core. And take care to disenchant all that you can and boost enchanting along the way. Smithing yourself some sets of armor earlier on can help boost your skill and of course your actual early game effectiveness. You will need to be about level 50 to get all of these perks, but ultimately, the order is hard to explain because it will be limited variably by your skill growth. At the end of the day, use all of them as you level up, don't wait for one and be stuck grinding one skill at late levels. That can be rather boring. But now let's get into the gear. So gear, weapons, armor, and items. The end game gear is as follows. Hope's Fire and True Flame for the weapons, a full set of her hand armor, which will be enchanted, and any ring or necklace that you like. But I chose the Nordic amulet and ring because it fits the color scheme well and something different. Enchanting is absolutely essential to maximize this character and make you truly feel like a Hand of Almalexia, that is, a warrior enhanced by divine magic. So True Flame does 30 points of fire damage and Hope's Fire does 30 points of shock damage, so you don't have to worry about enchanting those obviously, but as for what you wear, you're going to want to enchant the chest piece with fortify health and stamina, the boots will fortify one-handed damage and stamina, the gauntlets will fortify one-handed damage and magicka, the helmet will have fortify magicka and fortify restoration, and both the ring and the necklace will have fortify one-handed and fortify health. All of these enchantments together will enhance the build and truly make him feel like he has the divine blessings of a goddess. Other additional items that may be worth pursuing are Azura's Star for easier charging of your weapon, the Masks of Almalexia, Sothasil, and Vivek are also sacred relics worth keeping, but I don't know how I feel about wearing the Mask of Almalexia. It feels almost heretical to be donning the visage of the face-snaked queen. Overall, for this character, I enjoy collecting and gathering relics, books, and any items relevant to the glory days of Morrowind in the Tribunal, and I feel like it is a cool hobby to pursue on the side. Could also pursue things like 
Alexander, Keening, and Wraithguard. Final note on the early game gear, I would suggest the most Dunmer-like options. So, for instance, if you can access Bone Mold earlier on. However, by the time you get to Ravenrock, you won't be that far from accessing her hand armor, which is obviously the goal. So now we understand the character concept, the backstory, the role playing, the skills, the perks, the gear, all the technical stuff. How does it come together in a playstyle? Skyrim is not the most complex game when it comes to combat, especially if magic is not playing a big part. And so this build is rather straightforward. Draw your twin blades, Hope's Fire and True Flame, and go to town carving the unfaithful. By the time this character is fully realized with enchanted gear and these weapons, he's already a powerhouse, but for the moments when there is a powerful swarm of enemies or one titan of a foe and your health is diminished, you can switch to grand healing and cast one or two of them and you'll be back to full health in an instant, as well as having restored stamina thanks to the respite perk. Additionally, the spell Stendar's Aura is a really cool looking spell for this character, a sort of whole aura of light surrounding the hand of Almalexia, doing extra damage to the encroaching vampires of Molag Val and the vile undead. It's a good fit for the theme. But that, ladies and gentlemen, I think is everything you need to know how to play the Hand of Almalexia build. I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy playing this new vanilla Skyrim build, utilizing the new content that comes with the Anniversary Edition. Again, if at any point you need help with the Ghosts of the Tribunal questline, there is a video walkthrough linked in the description below. Subscribe for more Elder Scrolls content, builds, lore, and our weekly Elder Scrolls podcast. Thanks so much for all your support and do be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it because it really does help out the channel. Thanks again. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.